In this video, we're going to go over the quantum algorithm for the discrete logarithm problem. Okay, so you can probably already guess what the first two steps of the algorithm are going to be. It's very similar to what we've already seen. First, we're going to prepare some kind of uniform superposition and then apply an oracle. Okay, so let me just remind you what the function is in, in this case that we have Oracle access to. Okay, so again, the problem is that we have some cyclic subgroup, capital G, generated by an element little g, and the size of this subgroup is n, and we're given some element of capital G, so this element is some power of little g, and we want to figure out what that power is. Okay, so we want to compute the a such that little g to the power, power a is equal to h. Okay, and in the last video, we saw that uh, this problem, computing the log base g of h, was equivalent to a, a hidden subgroup problem where the function was a function from zn times zn to g such that f of a comma b is equal to h to the power a times g to the power b, okay? So this function hides a, a subgroup, uh, and that subgroup is you know, defined in terms of log base g of h, okay? So knowing a generator of that subgroup, uh, from that we can compute log base g of h. Okay, so again, we have Oracle access to this f, and we want to find the subgroup hidden by f. Okay, so in this case, our algorithm is going to have three registers. Okay, each register is going to be indexed by an element of Zn. And the first, first thing that we're going to do is prepare the uniform superposition over the first two registers. Okay, so we do that here. Now we're going to apply f. Okay, so that's going to um, write the, when the first two registers hold a and b, that's going to write f of a comma b into the third register. Okay. Okay, now also, uh, you know, very similar to our previous algorithms, now we're going to measure the, well, this should say third register. So when we measure the third register, we're going to see some value, let's call it z, in the third register. And then we're going to be left with a superposition over all a and b such that f of a comma b is equal to z, okay? And we already know what these uh, sets look like, right? The, the sets on which f is constant, um, these are just our coset states, okay? That we defined in the, in the last lecture. So uh, these are our sets of the following form where, uh, so the set of elements, you know, a comma b, where a times log base g of h plus b is equal to some constant value modulo n, okay? Uh, so after we measure the third register and throw it away, uh, we're in the uniform superposition over the elements in a coset state, you know, so the elements in, in LC for a random value of c, okay? And again, this coset state is just going to be a, a shift of the subgroup H. H is just L0. So we can actually write this as a sum over all elements of H um, shifted by C. So we saw in the last lecture that the shift was by the element 0, comma C. So it's going to be elements of the form A, comma, uh, A, ket A, tensor, ket B plus C, uh, as we sum over all a, b, and in, in h, or L, equivalently L0. Okay, so that's the state that we're in now. And now, of course, as a third step, we're again going to apply the Fourier transform. So since the group that we're working in now is Zn times Zn, we want to apply the Fourier transform over Zn times Zn. Okay, so what's that? Well, um, you know, in the pre and last week we we went over the Fourier transform just over Zn, 
Okay, and that has has this action on a basis state. So it maps the the state x to one over root n times sum over all y and z n omega to the minus x times y ket y. Okay, where again omega is a primitive nth root of unity. Now the Fourier transform over z n times z n is just going to be the tensor product of f n with itself. Okay, so that is what we're going to apply now. And as I did with Shor's algorithm, let me first just tell you the punchline. Okay, so um, so the punchline is that when we apply f n tensor f n to this coset state, what we're going to get is a uniform superposition over elements a comma b in the set S, uh, and then you know we have some some phase here, but that's not going to be important for us. Uh, and what is this set S? Okay, so S is the set of elements of the form b times log base g of h mod n comma b. Okay, where b ranges over z n. Okay, so this is very similar to what we saw, you know, say in the uh, period finding problem. Okay, so the the zero non-zero pattern doesn't depend on which coset we're looking at. Okay, so it doesn't depend on the value of c. C only plays a role in in this phase here. Okay, but it it doesn't change, uh, you know, which which elements have non-zero amplitude versus zero amplitude, okay? So what this means is that independently of the value of C, so independently of our measurement in the second step, after we apply this Fourier transform and we measure, we're going to see an element of the form b times log base g of h mod n comma b for uh, for b chosen uniformly at random in z n okay and now we claim that this is going to suffice for us to learn log base g of h okay so again now the quantum part of the algorithm is done and we just have the classical post-processing okay so Again, the punchline is that after we do the Fourier transform and we measure, we're going to see an element of the form b times log base g of h mod n comma b for b uniformly at random and z n, okay? And now if, uh, if b is relatively prime to n, okay? So that means that if b is invertible in this group z n times, then we can just multiply by its inverse, okay? So if we multiply by the um, by its inverse, you know, times the first element here, if we multiply this by b inverse, then uh, we just get back log base g of h, which is exactly what we want, okay? So this is kind of the the good case for the classical post processing, right? If if b is uh, relatively prime to n. And now we also know that we're just going to see a b uh, uniformly at random. So now we can just look at some you know, number theoretic bounds for um, the number of numbers that are relatively prime to n. Okay, so I, again, this is something that we saw come up earlier. This is known as the, the totient function. And there's general bounds that the that the Totian function of n is always at least you know a constant times n divided by log log n. Okay, so that means that uh, since we're just seeing a uniformly random b, the probability that b is going to be relatively prime to n is at least one over you know some constant times times log log n. Okay, and whenever this happens. Uh, then we're going to be able to uh, to derive log base g of h to compute log base g of h. 
Okay, so we just need to repeat the quantum algorithm, something like theta of log log n many times, and then with constant probability, we're going to be able to compute the log base g of h. So just to summarize the whole algorithm, okay, so the quantum procedure consists of you know, two applications of the Fourier transform and one query to f, and then we have to repeat the quantum procedure theta of log log n times in order to succeed with constant probability, okay? So our total number of queries is going to be order log log n. The total quantum gate complexity is going to be order log squared n, you know, for each application of the Fourier transform times log log n, okay? So that's a, a summary of the complexity of Shor's discrete logarithm algorithm.